okie dokie. We're going to do a little video here. Um, and this video is to get you prepared for the actual practice quiz. Not the actual quiz, but the practice quiz. Because there's a couple of questions on this practice quiz that could be a little challenging, like this one. It's so easy, you might get confused. Uh, what does it say? It's an equation that says 8 equals 32 divided by a number. So yes, you could do this in your mind, right? If you're good at multiplying and dividing. 32 divided by what is 8? All right, 32 divided by what is 8? The answer is 4, of course. But um, on this section, of course, I want you to show your work. I want you to demonstrate how you're getting rid of things. And again, let's think of our notes here, our notes from this section. It says the goal of solving any equation is to get the x by itself, to get the variable, to isolate the variable on one side, right? Get x by itself on one side. How do you do that? Well, to get rid of something, you must do the opposite, the inverse operation. And remember, what you do to one side, you must do to the other. So if you're looking at this problem and you're freaking out because you're like, what? This is crazy. It's a fraction with the x in the bottom. How am I supposed to get the x by itself if it's in the denominator of a fraction? Well, think about this. It's really a division problem. If you want to get rid of division, you do the inverse operation of division, which is multiplication. And of course, if you're dividing by x, you're going to multiply by x in order to get rid of that division of x. So we're going to get rid of this division of x by multiplying by x. And that will cancel it out. But of course, if you multiply by x on one side, you have to multiply by x on the other side. So what do we really have here? We have 8x equals 32 which is really saying 8 times x equals 32. And if you divide by 8 and divide by 8, you get your answer x equals 4. Okay. Once again, 32 divided by 4 really does equal 8. So there's your answer, x equals 4. That one's so easy that you might get confused. Let's jump to a more entertaining type of question. Heck yeah, take a look at that. Oh yeah, that's the kind of question you want to take to a party. Turn on the lights. Turn off the music, tell everybody to gather around, show them how to solve this multi-step equation that requires simplification with variables on both sides. Yeah, let's do it. So step one on solving any equation is to simplify both sides of the equation. Okay, so steps to solving any equation. Step one, simplify both sides of the equation. What does that mean? If there's any distributed property, do it. Then after that, if there's any combining like terms, you do that, right? Add x's with x's, numbers with numbers. Of course, you're always going to multiply before adding or subtracting. So distributed property first, and then combining like terms, if you have it. And you do that to each side. Okay. And then after that, you worry about your goal, which is getting the variable by itself on one side, getting x by itself. OK, anyway, let's go back to this question. Let's simplify each side one at a time. So I'm just going to look at each side. I'm going to look at the left side. I have a fraction. I have a 9x, negative 9x. I can't really subtract this unless I get a common denominator. So there is no distributive property. I'm not going to mess with this right now. I'm going to look over here. There is distributive property over here. So I'm going to ignore the left side just for a little bit. And I'm going to focus in on the right side of my equal sign. And on the right side, I am going to distribute negative 4 times x. That's negative 4x. Negative 4 times negative 2. That's a positive 8. And of course, I'm going to bring down uh, this minus 5x. I'm just going to rewrite it, minus 5x. So I have distributed. I got these two answers for the distribution. I brought down the minus 5. After distributed property, is there any combining like terms? And the answer is yes. There's three terms here, and I have two of them that are x's. They are alike. So that's like saying I owe $5, or I owe five little plastic x's, or I owe five whatever you want to call it, and I owe four more. So if you owe and you owe, you're going to owe a lot. That's going to be a negative 9x, negative 9x. And this plus 8 over here, I'm just going to bring it down, plus 8. And of course, the uh, equal sign right here, I'm just going to bring that down. And that's about as simple as the right side could get. Let me just rewrite this left side. I'm going to rewrite it. And as you could see, uh, since it's simplified now, I want to start worrying about getting x by itself on one side. Okay, um, So I do notice that there's a minus 9x here and a minus 9x there. So I have x's on both sides. Yes, I have an extra x down here. But I have x's on both sides that I could easily get rid of simply by doing the inverse operation right, of whatever you have there, the opposite of what you have there. So what is the opposite of a minus 9x or a negative 9x? The opposite of a negative 9x is a positive 
9x. That will completely eliminate it. But if you added 9x to the right side, you have to add 9x to the left side, which will also be completely eliminated. So we have a new simplified equation, negative 16 over x plus 2 equaling 8. I just brought down the 8, brought down the equal sign, brought down the fraction with the negative in front. Anyhow, what's the problem here? A lot of people are confused because, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, guys. We have a fraction here. I don't like fractions, right? Not only that, I have x in the denominator again. We don't want x in the denominator again. So let's get rid of this uh, fraction, which is really a division situation. I want to get rid of division by multiplying. Uh, again, you could get rid of any fraction as long as you multiply everything by the denominator of the fraction that you want to get rid of. So we have a fraction here. We're going to get rid of it by multiplying by the denominator. The thing is, normally we have like a 5 or a 2 or an 8. Right here we have an x plus 2 as a denominator. So I'm going to treat that as if it were one term by putting it in parentheses. And I'm going to multiply both sides of this by that exact x plus 2 value. Okay. What you do to one side, you must do to the other. So what happens when you have something divided by that exact thing? It cancels out, right? 3 divided by 3 is 1. 2 divided by 2 is 1. x plus 2 divided by x plus 2 is 1. That will completely eliminate. So what do I have left on the left side? I have a negative 16. I have an equal sign. And of course, I have uh, a distribu uh, distributed property that I need to do on the right side. So I might as well do that. 8 times x is 8x. And then uh, 8 times 2, that is 16. So I almost have x by itself. I mean, this equation is way nicer than this original one. I want to get x by itself. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to subtract 16. Because when it comes down to it, you got an 8 times x plus 16. This is what's important. That's kind of important because it's with the x. This number is all by itself. Get rid of this number first. Uh, the way to get rid of a plus 16 is to do the opposite, minus 16. What you do to one side, do to the other side. So you're going to have to subtract 16 over here as well. Okay, And I hope everybody sees that whenever I say what I do to one side, do to the other, it's like a wall on the equals. The equals just keep coming down. All right. Anyway, uh, let's, let's uh, find out what that 16 minus 16 is. Whoops, sorry about that. So over here, 16 minus 16, that is negative uh, 32. So we have a negative 32, and the equal sign keeps coming down. Over here, that canceled out, 8x. So what do I have here? I really have 8 times x equaling negative 32. So if you don't want this multiplication of 8, you need to get rid of it by doing the inverse operation of multiplying by 8, which is dividing by 8. And we do to one side, and do to the other side, divide by 8. You will have your final answer, x equals negative 4. Uh, yes, it says negative 4 equals x. That's perfectly fine. However, uh, I believe on, uh, on the quizzes, I prefer you to type in x equals negative 4 instead of typing in uh, negative 4 equals x. So type in x equals negative 4. And that's how to do this super fun problem. I hope you enjoyed this equation. Let's move on. Check out these word problems. I like them because they make you think. It says find four consecutive integers whose sum is 74. Once again, we need to remember what the word consecutive means. Uh, again, if you go to the doctor because you're sick, kind of like me right now, I got a really bad congestion. Anyways, if I go to the doctor and the doctor says, hey, take this medicine for five consecutive days and you're going to feel better. What does that mean? That means one day after another after another. You can't skip days, right? They're right next to each other. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, right? Okay, so consecutive means right next to each other without skipping, right? Without uh, skipping. Uh, so it says, find four consecutive integers. So what does that tell us? I want four numbers okay, whose sum, what does sum mean? Add. Okay, so sum means add. So I want to add four numbers, okay, because integers are just numbers, either positive or negative, um, that are nice, no decimals, no fractions. It says whose sum is 74. So I want to add four numbers. So imagine this. I have uh, one number plus another number plus another number, plus another number, and it should equal 74. Equal 74, okay? So if this number is a 5, so it would be 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8. 
If this were a 13, it'd be 13 plus 14 plus 15 plus 16, because that's what consecutive means. That you're doing numbers right next to each other without skipping any, right? So we want four numbers whose sum is 74. Four numbers, I got four blank spots here. Um, now, of course, in math, you're not going to put blank spots. You're probably going to put parentheses. So uh, whatever this first number is, this one has to be the next one, and so on and so on. And when you add them up, it gives you 74. Now, I don't know what this first number is. So what I want to call it, I want to call it x. I mean, you could put in parentheses. You don't have to, whatever. But that's x. Now, whatever this x value is, if it's 7, then this one has to be 8, which means that this next number is actually x plus 1. Again, remember, if this is 7, there's going to be 7 plus 1, which is 8. So if this is 7 and this is 8, what's this one going to be? This is going to be 9, which means that this one's going to be 7 plus 2. Okay? 7 plus 2. Which means that the next one's going to be 7 plus 3. Okay? Again, assuming if this was 7, then this would have to be 8, which would be 7 plus 1. This would have to be 9, which is 7 plus 2. This would have to be 10, because 7 plus 3, right? So this is how you set it up. And the bottom line is the parentheses are not necessary. Why not? Because there's nothing to distribute. Uh, even if you distributed a plus sign, it's not going to change anything. So you don't really need the parentheses. So let me rewrite it without parentheses. And that's a huge equation that requires simplification. Now, there is no distributive property, but there is combining like terms. You could combine this x with this x, x plus x is 2x, plus one more, that's 3x, plus one more, that's a total of 4x's. And of course, I could also add up the, the numbers. The 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 3 is 6. 3 plus 3 is 6, so plus 6. Let's bring down the equal sign, and of course, the 74 on the right side. So this is my new simplified equation. All I need to do is solve it. I'm going to subtract 6, subtract 6. Uh, that will leave me uh, 4x equaling uh, 68. And for my final step here, I am going to um, divide by 4 and divide by 4. And that will give me 17. And uh, I actually did that with the calculator. 68 divided by 4 is 17. So what did we just find here? We found that value of x. And what is x? x is 17, which means that this first number right here is the number 17. And the next number is 18, the next number is 19, and the next number is 20. So if I did add up 17 plus 18 plus 19 plus 20, it will give me 74. So it's asking for four consecutive integers. How are we going to type it in on the instructions? It will say type in 17, 18, 19, 20. And I do tell you to not put spaces between your terms. That's your final answer right there for this problem. Again, more important than the answer is the thought process on how to create an equation based off of this four consecutive integers that are you're adding up. You're, the sum is 74. So the first number is x. The next number would have to be the very next number, x plus 1. The number after that would be x plus 2, right? So and so on and so on. Let's look at a similar word problem, but slightly different. This one says, find three consecutive odd integers whose sum is 177. So once again, we see the word sum, which means we're going to be adding and we're going to be adding three numbers, right? One number plus another number plus another number. That's three numbers. And my answer will be uh, 177, OK? So notice that I used parentheses this time instead of the little blank spot underlines that we did on the other one. Um, anyway, we don't know the first number, uh, but we need to pay attention to what it says. It says odd integers. Yeah, consecutive odd integers. So we don't know the first number. <clears throat> so I'm going to put an x right there. But this has to be an odd integer. So imagine that. If it was uh, any odd number, like 5, the next number would not be 6. It would have to be 7. So if this was 5, then this would have to be 5 plus 2 to get 7. Okay, 5 plus 2 to get 7. So if this was 5, this would have to be 7. Even if you put like 13. 13. The next one can't be 14. It has to be 15. So how am I going to get from 13 to 15? 13 plus 2, right? Um, so it doesn't matter what odd number you pick. To get to the next consecutive odd number, you're going to have to put x plus 2 at representing your next number. And to get to the next odd number, think about that. If this was 5, this is 7, this must be 9, right? So that must be x plus 4. If this is 5, this would be 5 plus 4. 
So I'm going to put x plus 4. Now this throws a lot of people off because there's a word odd and you see even numbers here. But it doesn't matter if it's odd or even. In order for you to get from one odd number to the next one, you're going to have to add 2 to the original. Even if it's an even number, right? Uh, you have one even number. In order to get to your next even number, you're going to have to add 2 to that number. So I hope this makes sense. This is our equation. Of course, you don't need parentheses. And we could jump right into combining like terms. I have 1x, 2x's, 3x's, total of 3x's. I also have 2 plus 4, which is 6. I have my equal sign. I have my 177. It becomes a simple two-step equation that we could solve. Let's get rid of the plus 6 by subtracting 6, subtracting 6. Uh, I will have 3x equaling 171, which means I have 3 times x, which means I need to get rid of the multiplication of 3 by dividing by 3, dividing by 3. And with the calculator, 171, 171 divided by 3, that gives me 57. Okay, So 57 is my answer. x equals 57. Now, they're not asking for one number. They're asking for three consecutive odd numbers, right? odd integers. We know that the first number is 57, the first number right here. That's 57 plus the next one is the next odd number, 59. And of course, that would be 57 plus 2. That would give you 59. And 57 plus 4, that would give you the next odd number, 61. So to double check this with the calculator, go ahead and do 57 plus 59 plus 61. See if it really does give you 177. And you'll see that it does. So your answer, the way you're going to type in three consecutive odd integers, you're going to type them in with commas. So go 57 comma 59 comma 61. Hit Enter. That'll be the correct answer for this type of problem. Find two consecutive even integers whose sum is negative 74. All right. Uh, sum, we're adding. And we're adding two numbers. We have one number here in the parentheses. We have another number here in the parentheses. We don't know the first number. We're going to put an x right there. By the way, we do know that when you add them, you get the answer negative 74. Okay? Um, so we need to, again, remember what consecutive means. Numbers that are right next to each other. Let me go in yellow. Uh, numbers that are right next to each other, but even numbers. So if this is an even number, like 4, then this one would have to be 6. If this is 10, this would have to be 12. If this was 18, this would have to be 20. If this was uh, 92, this would have to be 94. In other words, whatever this value is, the next even number will be that value plus 2. Okay. So there's my problem once again. You don't need parentheses. And we could combine like terms, x plus x, that's 2x, bring down the plus 2, equals negative 74. Let's solve this guy. Of course, you want x by itself. You don't want the plus 2. So let's get rid of that plus 2 by uh, subtracting 2. What I do to one side, I do to the other. Subtract 2. I will have the 2x left over, the equal sign that comes down, and negative 76. So I'm almost done here. All I need to do is divide both sides by 2. And I will get x equals negative 38. Now, I did use a calculator on that. Uh, you could use calculators. Use them. Um, so what does this mean? This is our very first number, which is x. All right. So negative 38 is x. So I have a negative 38. Now what's the next consecutive even number? Now some people will say negative 40, which would be incorrect, right? Because the next number in order would be negative 36. Okay. And if that is kind of confusing to you, go ahead and plug in the negative 38 into x, which means this into x. Negative 38 plus 2 is negative 36. And th these are the two consecutive even integers whose sum is negative 74. On a calculator, to double check it, if you actually went negative 38 plus negative 36, it will equal negative 74. I hope this makes sense. How are you going to type this answer in? You're going to type in negative 38 comma negative 36. Okay, those are your two consecutive even integers whose sum is negative 74. I hope this video helps. Good luck on the practice quiz because it's going to be almost identical to the actual quiz that you're taking the next day.